All right, it's April, okay? It's April. And these spiders are already trying to give me a heart attack. I don't know how big this spider is, but the web, I, I only saw it because it's dirty, because <laughs> of the dew, dust and dew. Oh, you can't, let me, it's, it's, it's like that big. And it's got a hole in the middle. I hope that's not for my, I don't think I walked in it. Let me show you. Can you see that? Can you see the size, the, the size of that web covers that whole area of sky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There, there it is. There it is. Yeah, that's it. I almost walked into that. I almost walked into that. Where's the spider, hmm? Where's the spider? <laughs> I mean, Chloe wants to know where's the spider too. My Lord of mercy, that's a big web. My word. Great way to start Saturday. All right, well, on to today's video. <laughs> Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, reporting live from the Potage. This is Nicole Smith. Hi. Um, so this morning we're going to do our part three, uh, before the sun, it's, it's coming, it's coming fast before the sun gets here and ruins the light and my shadows everywhere. Uh, we're going to do part three, which is going to be this, uh, lovely arch that I built myself. And we're just going to go all the way, if Chloe will allow, we're going to go all the way down that row right there. Okay. All right. Uh, here we go. Okay, so I think we left off with the garlic last time. So garlic doing great. Oh, one of my poppies is standing up and it's got a little poppy head. That's fun. So this arch here, I believe I'm going to do some melons, cucumbers, loofahs, something pretty soon. <laughs> it's time. Uh, but I have some little strawberries. Some strawberries I started from seed and my little gnome Stanley. And I've got a, a sedum in there called, um, oh, what is Thor's father's name? Whatever Thor's father's name is, that's the name of that. <laughs> and then I have another little succulent there. I don't remember the name of those, but it's flowering. Isn't that pretty? Might be an Echeveria. Anyway, I have a lot of weeds to pull. That's a wood sorrel. I have some asparagus here that has sprouted. Oh, and it has looked like little asparagus beetles. I think those are a pest. Are they cucumber beetles? Some sort of beetle. Anyway, uh, this asparagus has obviously flowered, but there's more in there. I've got purple prints and um, Mary Washington, I believe. Got some garlic chives there. And then look at all my strawberries, all my strawberries, all my strawberries, okay? All my strawberries. So many strawberries. Love it. And I have some that are ready. They're over ready. They're probably been eaten by critters. These critters, I got to bag them up because they're laying on the soil. The roly polies and all the little critters have been getting my strawberries. Uh, while we're over here, let's look at the tomatoes on the back cattle panel here. Uh, we have girl girls weird thing, not wild thing, weird thing. And it is flowering. Here we go. Next, we have Cherokee Variegated. Cherokee Variegated. It is also flowering. Wonderful. Next is Starfighter Beefsteak. Don't see any flowers yet. And it's not a very strong, it doesn't look as strong and as robust as the others. Uh, last tomato back here is Evergreen. So this is going to be a green one ripe. And we have flowers, if you can see. There they are. There's the flowers spotlighted. More garlic chives. So many garlic chives. And uh, Bermuda. That's Bermuda making an appearance. All right, so not a whole lot in that area. Here I have a giant ground cherry that's starting to get that green color again. I think they were turning purple because they were suffering. No, they're stress. So now they're starting to get their green. So those are giant ground cherries. And then I have a sweet banana peppers here. I have three. 
and I did let one <laughs> make a pepper, which is why they, they, they look sad and stunted now. Um, they need fertilizing. It, we have had some cool mornings, which I think is stressing them. There's a zinnia volunteer from last year. Uh, I have dill. This is dill. Back there is dill. But that is fennel. And you see they look very similar. The dill has more of a bluish hue. And then the fennel is more green. And then I have more dill right here. And then this little patch of lettuce is my satin sheets. A farmer's market blend from Botanical Interest. One of my favoriteest lettuce blends of all time. How gorgeous they are. And I need to pick them. Like this weekend has to be the weekend. We were We got up to 86 or 87 yesterday. So... It's lettuce season is over. I have some stunted uh, red acre cabbage. They never did anything. From the time I took them out of their cell trays and put them in here, they just kind of sat and stared at me like, dude, you messed it up. You messed us up. We can't grow. And that's what happened. They didn't grow. Uh, my salvia, Berenice, uh blue better salvia that I have all over the garden, just self-seeded. I didn't put that there. Well, maybe at one point I did, but I didn't have to re-put it there. Just put itself there. They just put themselves there. And then my whole mess of peas. Yep. My whole mess of peas. It looks like it's time to harvest a smaller mess. I got a small mess ready. Love that. Uh, my quarter butte cabbage. Stunted. Just stunted, mistreated, misplanted. And they're not going to do anything. That one might. I might leave that one. But all these other ones are coming out. Uh, same with the lettuce coming out so that I can plant all of my stuff for late spring and summer. I've got okras, I've got watermelons, you know, all kinds of things. Um, back here's more weeds. The dump truck. I don't know if you can hear that. More weeds. And see all of that ferny green? All that ferny green? Yeah, you guessed it. It's freaking tick seed. Frickin' forest of tick seeds. So all that's got to come out. I've got squashes planted in here, but you can't see them for all the tick seed. And, well, because they're all stunted and something is still not quite right with the soils. Still not right. I don't know what else to do. So, like, here's a caserta. I planted it uh, almost two months ago, February 2nd. Look, that doesn't look like a two-month-old squash. That looks like a six-week-old squash, maybe, or a four-week-old squash. It's dumb. Yeah, I had a whole video planting squash, and I didn't post it, and probably a good thing, because they're all stunted, and they're all not doing anything. Okay? Okay, enough on that. This is my fig tree. This is my Celeste or Turkey, because I lost the tag. It's one or the other. Look how big and beautiful. Those leaves are the biggest I've ever seen. This is my fifth, fourth, third year, third or fourth year. This was a gift from a subscriber that lives in the area. Hi, Johanna. Hello. Um, so yeah, there's that in the pot. This pot's empty because I'm going to put squash in it this weekend and cover it with a uh, row cover to keep the vine bore off of it. So we're going to try squash in containers and get them covered because obviously my early attempt at squash failed because the squash <laughs> failed. So forget trying to plant them in February. I could have had squash if, if I would have had the right conditions and willpower. Oh, I almost forgot about a tomato that's hiding here. When I take down all these peas, I'll be able to see him better. This is the Ivunchen Giant. I'm hoping to get like a two, three pound tomato, even a one pound tomato. There's the tomato mixed in with all that mess of peas right there. So anyway. Oh, and there's another uh, dill right there. Oh, and marigolds that reseeded from last year. So lots and lots of French marigolds. I planted seeds from a packet one time. I've never had to buy marigold, uh, not this kind, ever again. I'll have it forever. If you need seeds, let me know. I got millions. Um, in this pot here is uh, my P Bliss Parfuma from, that I grew from a cutting. It was blooming a few days ago. That's done. And then I have this nasturtium that I'm finally seeing from Botanical Interest. I think it's called Purple Emperor or Purple Prince or something like that. Anyway, it's supposed to be a purple nasturtium, pinky purple. We'll see if it does anything. It's looking a little stunted. And then in this container here, I have some micro dwarfs. I have schneegerjuk. Schneegerjuk. I have uh, 
Jip and Janenki. It's Jip and Janenki. Jip and Janenki. And then Purple Boy. And a little purple tomato. So, um, this one is my Groovy Tunes Micro Dwarf. Finally have some flowers. Yay. So excited about it. And one of my poppies from uh, Antique Rose Emporium. And I think this uh, succulent I got from CC over at CC's Texas Garden. I think this is like an ice plant. I think it's a type of ice plant from what I've been able to research. And then my Munstead Lavender that I potted up. I really should uh, cut it back. Candace over at Elder and Oak said to, uh, you know, pinch it. And that way it gets bushier and fuller. And I need to do that. These ones also probably. It just takes guts. It takes guts to pinch them. I need to do it. I'm thinking about it. Thinking about it real hard. Okay. Here I have my pawpaws that I grew from seed. They survived winter, leafing back out. This one I thought was dead, but there's a little leaf. So make sure before you chuck a plant that looks like this, do a little scratch test. And if you see green, it's still alive. Okay. And then I have my big Italy parsley that's looking <laughs> not so big. It's pretty small looking parsley. Anyway, there it is. I'm growing it. And then my pot. Look at how big these bunny tails grass have gotten in just a couple weeks. This is my bunny tail floofs that I planted up with the Russian sage. Is it Russian sage? I don't remember the name of this plant for whatever reason. I think it's Russian sage. Anyway, and I ha oh, and yeah, and there's a little lavender. I planted a little lavender in there too. And then this pot here, more bunny tails floofs. And then my flamingo, pink flamingo. How gorgeous. I need more pink flamingo seeds for sure. That's beautiful. On the table with my water. This is ice water because it's early. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's early. Uh, let's see. In this pot here is uh, sweet marjoram. Looking a little sad. That's okay. It'll perk back up. And then I have my three pots of munsted lavender. I need to either pinch them or stake them up. One or the other. Something's got to happen little floppy oh and I have some <laughs> Russian kale red Russian that is et up with looper yeah cabbage looper you know you know what it is uh my lambs ears since I potted it up last couple videos ago last video I don't know uh lambs ear looking beautiful it's it's like doubled in size beautiful uh my whorehound it's doing nothing my whorehound hates me it's been stunted like that forever um, and then this is some English thyme or common thyme that I grew about two years ago. It's been overwintering. Looking lovely. And then my tall Vera lavender. So I just did that like a week or so ago. So it's still settling in. And then I brought out my two <laughs> orange hat tomatoes uh, that were in my office all winter. And you're like, hey, Nicole, orange hat tomatoes. I didn't know they had burgundy red foliage and flowers. Well, that is the red spike amaranth that reseeded itself in there so i need to dig out those seedlings and just kind of place them about the garden that's what needs to happen there but this little plant stand i got for free from my friend astrid when she was moving i got that table for free and i think i paid three dollars for that table so and then i got that little table from uncle woody yeah a couple years ago all right moving on down my chair where I can sit and observe my kingdom. I know, it's looking beautiful. It's looking beautiful already so early. Um, down here behind the chair, I've got some common mullen that I grew from seed. It's looking sad, but it's there. And then I have my chamomile that I grew in the house uh, for my WIG 2023. I planted it in the ground and then put my chair in front of it. So it's kind of shaded, but it looks like it's trying to come back. It looks like it's trying to re-sprout, so that's good. And then I have a purple red straw flower that I grew from seed like last year, like over a year ago. And it's just hanging out over winter. And it looks like it's going to try to grow again if I would move that chair. So I need to move that chair is what I'm trying to say. Also, I have this hanging planter that's broken. But I have a project I want to do with it. So I have it sitting there waiting for that project. So I'm just not trying to place junk around the garden on purpose. I mean, you know, I mean, well, I mean... Anyway, it doesn't matter. Sunset runner beans came up. I uh, planted a couple weeks ago. And hopefully they will climb up the moringa. But 
one of my moringa spears broke off so these moringa trunks from last year may not be sturdy enough to hold but we'll see we'll see uh my napa cabbage ed up and it looks like it's trying to make a head i don't think it's bolting i think it's actually trying to make a head but the the cabbage looper so i probably will spray that down i think my bt has expired because it's been out in the sun for three years so i'll put some captain jack's dead bug brew there's more of my pampas plume celosia and i showed you poppy it's gonna be so pretty when all these poppies start blooming all that wood sorrel i need to dig out these cabbages aren't going to do anything. So I have all these uh, all these cabbages that when I planted them out like months ago, like in February, this is April, they never did anything. They just stayed stunted and because I leave them in the cell trace too long. I'm telling you. More Napa cabbages. This is the Michelle. And I think this one is bolting. Yeah, it's not heading up. It's bolting. So we'll take that out. Take out all the collard greens that never got any bigger they never got any bigger than when i planted these i think in november maybe they just they're stunted okay so don't let your plant sit in cell trace forever because they'll get stunted and of course i have some junk over here because i was working on cleaning out this bed and doing the cardboard which i still haven't finished but anyway it's fine anyway these were these were georgia collards and now i'm going to take them out i was leaving them for the flowers for the pollinators but since i have the citrus out here I've got roses blooming and I've got salvia blooming. We're just going to take it out. Okay. So uh, here in this corner, I have some, oh my God, artichoke. Yes, artichoke right there. I forgot the name of it at the moment. I think it's green, green something. It's a very common one anyway. And then dazzling blue kale back there. I've got some tansy. Is that ferny stuff back there? And I have this grapevine here in the corner, which is a muscadine. I forgot the name. Forgot the name. I have two different kinds of muscadine. I have this muscadine here. And then way over there behind that arch, I forgot to tell you about that muscadine. Let's go. So this is another muscadine that's starting to leaf out. I've noticed mine are leafing out a lot later than Cynthia's over at CeCe's Texas Garden. She already has little tiny grapes and she has for almost a month now. It's been a few weeks anyway. But mine is leaping out and starting to climb again. So pretty soon the whole potage fencing will be enclosed by vines and then I'll have to decide do I cut them back or do I leave them because I use the cattle panel also to grow other vegetables not just grapevines. And then this grapevine here in the middle that I passed over again uh, is like a um, Concord style grape. It's called Fredonia Blue. So that's Fredonia Blue. And that's the one that made the big grape harvest last year. But see, it's very late leafing out. And I don't see any uh, grape clusters yet. So anyway. Um, oh, I passed over this basket here. Um, I did have it hanging on that hook right there, but I took it down when I brought in my citrus. Um, so I, it's just setting right here temporarily. But here I have a fat frog, and I have been eating them. The fat frog is actually really good. I think I did a taste test video and then just never posted it. There's <laughs> fat frog. And then this is a mysterious one here that's fruiting. Um, and the fruits are, look like they're a little more of that heart shape, like a kiss shape. And then the yellow one that is labeled bonsai, but is clearly not bonsai. Oh, and then my creeping thyme that I grew from seed. I put some creeping thyme in here to like spill over the basket. More creeping thyme here. And then I dug up one of my French marigolds and put that in the middle. So there, marigolds are supposed to be, supposed to be, good companion plants for tomatoes. So there's that. But that's not staying there. It's just temporary. All right, so let me give this a real quick look real quick once oh while we're over here I just want to show you this basket because there's something fun going on in it so these are my fire ring firewood rings you know you're supposed to line them with firewood and stack up firewood well I use them for hanging baskets because that's how I do things okay and these this basket here and then I have another one hanging over there 
they have my little sweetheart sweet peas in them. And I just noticed this morning. Look, I got a little sweetheart sweet pea. How fun is that? So I got these from Botanical Interest. This is like my first sweet pea ever in my life because they just don't, don't really grow well in hot, humid southeast Texas near Houston, which is where I am. It's on 9A. Used to be 8B. Now we're 9A. Anyway, look, I got a sweet pea. And that's fun. Oh, and I planted another Pampas Plume Celosia right there next to the leaky faucet. Oh, and I need to do my irrigation today. That's another project for today. And finish the freaking cardboard. Well, I'm not going to tell you what's over there just yet. That's for tomorrow. So, there we go. Down the row. Down the junky row. Oh, I forgot this. See, I forget things. I'm blind to it. This container right here is all of my Roman chamomile that I grew for the uh, hashtag WIG2023. And there's a carrot that survived. Um, this is the Roman. So most of the, all of the harvest I did indoors were the German chamomile. So this is the Roman chamomile. And all my little babies I put in there, see how they do. And then that is also has nothing in it. And I'm going to put squash. And put the, you know, uh, moth, moth fabric protector cloth over it. So... All right, guys. Here's my shadow. I know. I know. It's looking good. I know. I know. It's looking great. So, real excited about it. Got a lot to do today. I'm off for the next five days, okay? For um, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, the eclipse. You know, just need some time away. So, I took it. Took some time away. And it's the perfect time, especially now that we're mid i got to do our taxes. I haven't done that yet. Anyway, it's mid-April. So, got to get that. that got a lot to do, it, the, especially in the garden. It's time. It's time, y'all. So, uh, thanks again, Gail. And I'm going to say it correctly this time. It's hashtag garden tours. Garden tours. And it's a collaboration. It's not a challenge. Thank you, Gail. All right, so uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.